the last thing we get have to do in this class, uh, the last sort of math tool that you really need to have down, is solving systems of equations. Now this is a situation where you've got more than one equation and also more than one unknown variable. And under the right circumstances, which hopefully will occur most of the time in this class, you can still find the unique value for each of those unknown variables that satisfies the system of equation. So as an example, as a very sort of general example, maybe you have an equation that looks like this, zero equals f of x and y, and uh, also zero is equal to g of x and y, okay? So in this particular case, um, f of x, like I said, you know, you could imagine this could be any number of crazy examples that you can think of, right? And some of them will be solvable and some of them might not be. And then y could be also, you know, some of these that are different, uh, like just whatever you want, okay? So you have two equations and you have two unknown variables. And the general rule is gonna be that you need n equations that are different to find n unknown variables. Okay? For example, if I told you that uh, x over y is equal to 1, okay, well you would be able to use that one equation to infer a relationship between x and y. In this case, that they must be equal to each other because we're dividing one by the other. But you wouldn't be able to go any further. You need more information to pin down the variables. If I gave you an additional equation, like x plus y is equal to two, now I have two equations and I have two unknown variables. This should be enough information to solve it. Uh, so in this case, I can use the first equation and see that x equals y, and then I could use that information to solve the second one. Wherever I see x, I could actually substitute in y, and I could get y plus y equals two. Simplify that to be two y equals two, divide each side by two, and I get that y is equal to two. And since I know that x is equal to two, I go back up the chain, and I get x is also equal to two a unique solution to this system of two equations and two unknowns. And when I did there, I used kind of the first technique that is really common, which is basically solve uh, for one variable and plug into another equation. And you just kind of iteratively do this over and over again until you get to the solution. So this is, these are methods for solution. That's supposed to say methods to solve, but I've run out of space on my little writing tablet. Okay, methods to solve. There's a second way to do it, which is maybe harder up front, but in this course for the kind of problems we solve tends to be uh, really like, I don't know, it can be elegant and it can make your life a lot easier. So this system sort of always works. We've just seen how you solve for one equation, you know, solve for an unknown variable, you use a couple tricks, and it's really reliable. Uh, the second system is to basically uh, alter the equations in a way that's allowed and then divide one equation by another or multiply uh, to eliminate variables that way. So in both cases, what we're trying to do is to go from having two equate, we ultimately wanna go from having n equations with n unknown variables. We wanna break, collapse that all down to, at the end of the day, one equation with one unknown variable. In the first system, we basically uh, solved for x, and then we plugged that in so we no longer had x in the other equations. And then we ended up down here at the bottom with two y equals two, so that was one equation with one unknown, and then we worked backwards up the, the system. 
the second approach, it works. It doesn't really, it's not useful for this kind of problem. But in a lot of the problems that we do in this course, it's going to be really useful. Okay, so uh, why does it work? Well, let's think about it real quickly. Like if we have an equation like uh, you know, f of x of y is equal to 3 and g of x of y is equal to 2 and we want to get rid of one of those variables, it often will turn out the case, like if we want to collapse this down to one equation, we could divide f of x and y by uh, 2 on each side, okay, that's allowed, but since 2 is equal to this equation, we, it's, we could also say that f of x of y divided by g of x of y is equal to 3 over 2, right? This is, uh, we've basically kind of gone from uh, we're just using rules we know, to, but the end result is that we're dividing this equation by this equation. And I'll give you an, in the next example problems, you'll see an application where this method makes it a lot easier to solve than the other method. Okay.